Welcome to our final episode of Work Flip, Krista. Hi. We Hi. are talking about all things switching around work as uh, COVID has kind of taken over every aspect of our lives. It has definitely impacted work life mm -hmm. for many women. And we have been talking about some practical ways to maybe increase income or increase flexibility because of this dang pandemic that has entered our world that we weren't really necessarily planning for. I don't know. I'm guessing <laughs> most of our listeners weren't like, okay, and here's the pandemic plan. Yeah. I mean, think to think back to the Spanish flu of 1918 and you just think like, oh, that would never happen to us. Like that was so 1918. And now look at us. Here we are. <laughs> Where people are going to be like, that's so 2020. Yeah. <laughs> no. I did hear something funny. Someone uh, had a little meme that said uh, 2020 is going to be like the new cuss word. So to say, ah, 2020. Because. Totally. Um, no, it's so true. It's so true. So to say it's so 2020 means it's a big old bummer mm -hmm. and we still need to have income. Uh, for many of us, we've worked really hard to be where we are in our careers, maybe, um, or we just want to have a job to go back to when things get a little more normal. And so we've had to think about how do we even just sustain so that when life feels a little bit more or less pandemic y, um, that we would have something to go back to. So we've had a good series. Uh, I don't know if you want to review, but our first guest was Joanna, and mm -hmm. she did a really great job of talking about the importance of work and uh, some things that have been, I don't know, that have come to light for women and for men about women and work because of COVID. I thought that was a really insightful interview. Yeah, and then I really loved Rachel Proctor's interview where for people who are more in the online space or who are starting a business and who are entrepreneurial, it was super, super helpful on how to start, where to start, how to clarify what your best idea is and run mm -hmm. with it. And then also um, she had some great tips on branding that I thought were excellent as well. So that if you're, if you're doing something like that are really important. So Rachel was really practical for someone who's in that more of the online space or starting a business where they need an online presence. Yeah. And even for somebody who already has a brand, I thought it was helpful because I was looking at some stuff for my husband's work right after we recorded that interview. And I was like, oh, hey, so we need to be asking this about the homepage. <laughs> yes. Um, because it just is real. So anyone who has an online presence or who is figuring out what their next step is. We really recommend that interview. And then last week we had on uh, Tara Royer Steele, is that her last yep. name? Uh, who is part of Royer Pie Empire. <laughs> and she talked about some pivots that they did as a result of COVID that some major events in their area closed down and they had all these pies and how did they, uh, distribute them? And then also, how did they keep everyone employed indefinitely? So if you just want a little inspiration from a woman who's done it and who said, you know, I, what I really appreciated is she kept saying, we didn't know if it was going to work. Yeah. We just had to keep trying until we found something that worked. And her motivation was keeping people employed. So she was trying to figure out how do we continue to generate enough income to do that? And she really inspired me to just try some things because I'm definitely, and we're going to talk about risk taking, but I'm definitely a person who likes to know what the plan is. Mm -hmm. And in situations like we're all finding ourselves in right now, sometimes there's not a plan. Yeah. The plan is there is no plan. <laughs> yeah. So she inspired yeah. me in that way. Okay. Hey, can, I want to jump in on that comment for a second. I was listening to a sermon from Andy Stanley, my man. Last week, you know how much I love him. And I feel like he just is so great about boiling concepts down. And he said, one of the things we need to separate out is that 
is clarity and certainty that we none of us can be certain in this time about anything so uncertainty is a uncontrollable right now mm -hmm. but what is a controllable is clarity and actually as leaders so if you are if you are in charge in any way at work in any way children a household um a group of people i mean yourself okay we can lead ourselves too but he said the best gift you can give people is clarity and so just because you're uncertain about the future doesn't mean you can't have clarity about the future so we'll link to that episode because it was phenomenal and actually i felt like it was very a call to empowerment like a call a little bit to just because things are uncertain that doesn't mean we need to be unclear about how we move forward and so um i thought that was excellent to separate those two and so i really encourage people to go listen to that so let's jump in alex a little bit to your pivot during covid personally and how has it work-wise motivated you or caused you to do something differently? Yeah, well, I can tell a little story in that I was in the process of working on a book proposal in February. Does everyone remember yeah. February? Yeah. Back no. in February. No. And um, starting to talk with my publisher about some things and we were getting close to moving in a direction. And then the shutdown happened and I shut down with it like i couldn't conceive of the idea of being creative i was really managing crisis as we all were in my home and my family and figuring out what's going on uh but then crisis we've all moved from kind of crisis to a little more of a fog like from the initial storm to the fog and the opportunity was still there so we started talking about a book idea, landed on it, and the publisher said, you know, we can um, have you turn in a manuscript on February 1st, and the book will come out spring of 2022. That felt like a million years oh my gosh, away. Oh it does. And I just thought, that sounds really far away, especially because it's a topic that I feel like is relevant to right now. And they said, okay, well, if you just move up the manuscript date to December 1st, we can have it come out fall of 2021. And that just felt closer to me. But here is what I had to kind of look at. They were trying to give me that extra time knowing that I have four children at home and that usually the school year is when I have alone and quiet time to write. This was June. We start school in August. I saw how things were going. I didn't know that my kids were gonna be back in school necessarily. And turns out they're not going to be. And so what I said in June was, you know what? I can't, that, that certainty, I can't be certain that my children are gonna be going back to school. So, but I am clear that I wanna write this book so let's just get it going now because chances are fall's gonna look a lot like summer. And mm -hmm. I'm glad I did that. So we're just kind of full charge ahead on the book writing, but I did have to break apart that certainty versus clarity and say, the reality is I do a lot of my writing when it's crunch time. We're just moving up crunch time. Totally. Uh, because my circumstances mean, not really change that much as much as I would like to think they would be back to normal school life. And we're not gonna be back to normal school life. So, mm -hmm. so that is how it has impacted me. Um, and it's just all very interesting, God's timing in all of this <laughs> as I push forward. Okay, so Krista, why don't you tell us how this whole pandemic life has influenced and shaped your work moves? Well, we were really deeply impacted financially at the beginning of the pandemic because with my husband owning a small business um, and being in the medical field, 
everything shut down. I mean, they had to furlough all of their employees. I know I've mentioned this on the podcast before, so it's not a surprise, but they had to furlough their employees. Uh, they, they shut down all the, you know, different surgery centers and whatnot. And so we suddenly found ourselves three months without a paycheck. And that is a huge reality check for families, even families who have saved some money. And, um, you know, if you follow maybe the Dave Ramsey, you know, he always says have three months, but that three months actually goes pretty quickly. And then you're like, okay, you know, now that's all gone. And so it, it just was interesting because um, I had been considering a move into life coaching for a long time and felt very led specifically to home coaching through a series, which at some point we'll talk about, um, through a series of events. And it, what it did for me is it lit, what came together was that urgency. And sometimes that urgency is a blessing because I know for me, I work better on deadlines and I work better when someone else is saying, this needs to happen now. And so for me, it was just that little kick to say, okay, it's time. Like, this is the time. There's an urgency here. You need to help your family get going, get moving on this thing that's going to help generate income for your family so you can help support your family during this time. And so that was a gift. And it's, mm -hmm. it's not something that I necess necessarily expected, but I, looking now, it really motivated me to you know, you and I talk all the time about how narrowing margins produce innovation. When there is something caving in, we have to get creative and burst out of that, you know, narrowing margin into innovation. And that's what I feel like for me happened for sure. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of listeners can relate to that. The urgency does push us. Mm -hmm. And I am a person who needs to be pushed. So uh, I can certainly understand how finally it kind of pushed you into that space. And you've done a whole lot in the last few months to get it set up so that you are ready now mm -hmm. to start and you already have started working. So I think it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like it, um, it made you more creative as you were starting it than then had you started this business a year ago? You know, I think for sure. I think, I think what it allowed me to do was to really think through entry points because as our family was needing additional income, I think through, okay, other families don't have a lot of, even if they haven't lost their jobs or their business hasn't shut down for the time being, they don't have a lot of extra to be spending on different things. And so it caused me to think through like, what are some, some smaller things people could do? What are some bigger commitments? You know, things like that, that I think is just so great whenever you're setting up systems and different levels of entry points, that's really helpful to have. And so I think I was definitely thinking through that differently had I created this outside of the pandemic. Yeah who your customer is and what her needs mm -hmm. might be. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, Alex, let's talk a little bit for those listeners who are really in this like angst and I get the angst. I get it. I'm like, should I stay or should I go? Isn't there a song about that? Mm -hmm. Should I stay or should I go now? And so like, you know, what do we do? I mean, what are some practical things that people can consider when they're really torn inside about, whether to stay at their current job or to look for something that's different than they have right now. Right. So we're thinking of the woman who, because of the pandemic, is um, needing either more income or more flexibility. Maybe things at work have been hard. Um, what does she need to consider? And I would say the first thing we have to know is what do we want? And sometimes when we're overwhelmed, I'll speak for myself, when I'm overwhelmed by my circumstances and I know that I need something different, I haven't quite clarified yet what it is I actually want. And so being able to 
clarify that and maybe have somebody ask you some questions to get you to that point. It always helps me to talk it through with someone who maybe isn't in the middle of it with me. Um, helps me articulate what I need and what I want in this moment. So that's the starting place. And then, then you can go to your employer and advocate for yourself. If, if what you want and what you have currently are different, to be able to say, this is what I want. And Joanna talked about this some about how to advocate and how COVID is an opportunity right now for women to advocate for themselves, especially if workplaces are using flexible scheduling more than they have in the past, more virtual work, that these are things women have often wanted but haven't been in a place to ask for, or they have done more of than maybe their male coworkers. And so they actually excel because they're seasoned in being virtual or flexible workers. So that this is a really good time for women to be advocating for themselves if they want some of those things. And that really does go with our voice series, which we did right before this one, of you know how to use your voice. Like, don't be afraid to say what your needs are. I mean, use your voice. What is the worst? I always go to this in my head. What is the worst thing that could happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like for most people, they say no. Mm -hmm. Okay, then you know that they say no. Now, now you have that information that's going to help you make your next move. Right. Because when you clarify and then you advocate for yourself, it's because there needs to be a change. And so if you've already decided this change needs to happen before you just jump ship, you need to see maybe the change can happen where you are. And maybe if your employer sees that, yes, indeed, you are ready to walk, that, um, that they're maybe more willing to bend and flex and give you what you need right now. Maybe not, but then at least, like you said, you have the information. So then you're better informed to make a decision. And often when we're feeling overwhelmed, we're making decisions out of um, ideas or concerns or thinking they're gonna say this when we don't actually know. And so let's make sound decisions with real information. And that means finding out if your employer can be more flexible or can give you a raise or fill in the blank, whatever you need to make work work for you right now. Let me say one more thing on that. My middle son Hudson is a master negotiator and I love it because I so appreciate his tactic and the way that he approaches us. And he always comes to us with a what's in it for you. Like mm -hmm. he always comes to us with like, mom and dad, like, let me just, here's my plan. Here's what I'm thinking. If I do this, this is, you know, how it's going to benefit you or the family or whatever. And it's so great because it, first of all, it cracks me up. But secondly, what I like is he's doing that third way thinking that you and I talk about all the time. He's coming up with creative solutions that benefit everyone. And so my encouragement is if you are clarifying with your boss, with your superior, whoever it is, also think through creatively what's in it for them that you could also say, hey, this is how it's going to benefit you also. This is what's in it for you. And this is what's in it for me. And this isn't this just a win-win. I mean, come on. This is like the Hudson approach, the sandwich approach. It's a win for you here. It's a win for me here. And isn't this great? Mm -hmm. So um, I would just encourage people to think through that because if we just come with this demanding voice of like, this is what I need, this is what I want, they're going to be less likely to work with that person than if you know, it's, it's done in a way that's just a little more, again, it's all approach. It's all communication, but a little more winsome, honestly, like just mm -hmm. having that little bit of kindness and winsomeness about it. That's like, I have a really great solution. There's just a positivity in that. That's really appealing to everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, and you're essentially selling yourself to your employer and you're stating what, you're, what you offer. Mm -hmm. And then this creative solution that you're advocating for is uh, your new offering, mm -hmm. if you will. Yeah. Okay, what else, Krista? What's a, a second thing that women should consider 
if they are trying to decide to stay where they are or make a change? I think the next thing to consider is, are there benefits of staying that you would lose if you go somewhere else? So, I mean, it could just be really practical. Like I would lose my medical benefits. Mm -hmm. During COVID, medical benefits are really important. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, like looking at it really practically, like I, if I lose this, this is a really big deal for me or my family. And so think, you know, really thinking through that um, before you jump ship, but also are there some unintended consequences of leaving? I mean, maybe you've been somewhere for 10 to 12 years mm -hmm. and they're willing because you, I mean, it, I know from being in a, I came from a family business. My husband has a small business. I know the value of employees who are willing to put in years of longevity because you don't have to retrain people. You don't have to sell people on your culture and teach them your culture. I mean, right. There's just so many benefits to having someone stay long-term that I um, usually employers are willing to work with someone who's more seasoned mm -hmm. and who is willing to be loyal to the company. And so, you know, is that kind of wane are there some things I would lose? Cause I am a seasoned employee and I have lots of flexibility. I, you know, have a lot of freedom cause they give me a lot of freedom. They trust me. Mm -hmm. You have to build all of those things back up. You have to start from scratch and that's hard to do. So maybe there's some unintended consequences that we don't think through. Yeah. I mean, little things like commute time mm -hmm. and um, yeah, relationships, friendships sometimes that you know, well, we're going to stay in touch, but just the, the added daily value of being with people that maybe you have worked with for years. And in a time of crisis, is that a time where you depend on these people more than you realize? And, and so we're not saying you, you should always stay. We're just no. saying think through from as many different angles as possible, what will leaving mean as far as what I'll lose? because it's often easy to focus on what you're going to gain by making a change. So mm -hmm. I'm going to get a raise or I'm going to be able to work three days a week, or whatever it is that's taking you away. That's the draw, but make sure that you are balancing and it with what you're going to lose and say, yep, it still outweighs what I'm going to lose. Yeah. And so I'm going to make that change. Yep. Totally. We just don't want regrets mm -hmm. after you've left. And sometimes that's unavoidable, but if it's avoidable, let's avoid it. Okay. Last one. Can you talk a little bit about the idea of risk tolerance and how that plays into the decision to stay or go? Right. We all have a different risk tolerance. By that, we mean comfort with risk. <laughs> so uh, often, we know that about ourselves and it is true in many areas of our lives. If we tend to be low risk people, that's me. I'm guessing as an Enneagram six that we tend to be low risk people in general because we always like to have all of our bases covered. That's what we're known for. We like to protect ourselves. Whereas um, other personalities just are a little more like, hey, we'll just figure it out as we go. Okay. That makes me like, that makes me kind of sweat a little bit, this idea right. of like, we'll figure it out as we go. So it just, we all are wired differently and maybe you don't know what your risk tolerance is at work. Well, but you know what it is in another area of your life. They may be similar. I'm just mm -hmm. saying they might be, they might not be because you might be more confident in one area of your life than another because confidence may impact your risk. So when it comes to a job change, you need to ask yourself, um, how ready am I to step into the unknown? Um, and am I ready to make a change when there's maybe a lot of other things in life that are unknown right now, depending on your industry and how it's being impacted by the pandemic or could be uh, whatever area you work in or just other things having to do with your family. Um, hello, schools. Like, there's just a lot of stuff that we don't know right now. And if you're cool with that and comfortable with that, then maybe 
making a job change doesn't feel like a big deal. But if all of those other things are stressing you out, the unknowns, what did you say? The uncertainty, <laughs> the, um, if that's stressful for you, then, then you really need to examine, is this additional unknown going to help my mental health? to hinder it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for some people, COVID has made people more comfortable with the risk tolerance. Mm -hmm. And so on the flip side, maybe you find yourself in a place where you're like, no, I, this has brought clarity to me and yeah. I am ready. It's worth it to me to make this change and to step out and do whatever it is. And so, you know, that's the flip side of that coin that I feel like COVID has for, I've heard so many people say, it has shown me that I am not where I want to be. This is not the mm -hmm. environment I want to be in. And who knows how much longer I have on this earth, but I am not spending another year in this place. I want to do something different. And this is again, that urgency of like, okay, I'm going to make a change. And so their risk tolerance has gone up. And I think that's, it's just good to identify those things, to know where you are on that spectrum and that scale. Yeah. It's increased clarity. It's increased Even clarity. Even though certainty is still uncertain. Yep. Still in the fog, the clarity is there. And I think for some people too, they've hit a breaking point of desperation. Mm -hmm. Either they know like, I can't work like I have before because of my kids or um, I, my husband's lost his job and I have to get a job. Again, that clarity is really clear about what needs to happen, that the risk tolerance um, is changing and recognize that. I think it helps to recognize, especially if you're thinking, why am I acting this way? Why am I thinking this way? To recognize, well, when circumstances change, we adapt to them. And so mm -hmm. maybe our risk tolerance is being pushed to a point where we have to make some decisions that we didn't think we would make right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Well, let's run through a quick list of, I'm going to call it quick cash. Yeah, if we just need like quick COVID cash, cash. Um, because we just, that's, that's the most pressing need at the moment. Let's run through a few. So number, we're going to do 10. Number 10, 10 jobs. I'm going to, and again, these are probably temporary jobs. They're probably not, they may turn into full-time for you. Mm -hmm. um, my friend, number 10, my friend Ariana Kelly, who is just fantastic, love her so much. And she's a devoted listener to the podcast, by the way, while she's doing this job. She is really the go-to person for families. For like, so, so a family would, would say, okay, my Ariana day, is on Tuesday and she shows up for four hours or three hours, whatever she's scheduled for. And they literally have her do all things under the sun. She may be decorating for holidays. She may be folding laundry, the baby's laundry some days. She may be um, helping them design a room. She may be cleaning, like literally grocery shopping. I mean, Basically, whatever that family needs done that day, she helps them do it. She has incredible relationships with these families. They have become dear friends, and she loves her job. And I thought, that's brilliant. It's brilliant. Mm -hmm. She's like a hire a mom. Yes. I mean, it's brilliant. Her kids are grown. I mean, her last one just graduated from high school, and so it's perfect, mm -hmm. you know, and she can be flexible. Again, getting back to that flexibility that we're looking for she can be flexible in that and kind of call her own schedule in a lot of ways. Okay. Number nine. Alex. Okay. Number nine. This is for the people with the cars. Um, an Uber driver or DoorDash delivery person. Now I think being an Uber driver would be fascinating. I yeah. think <laughs> you would meet all kinds of characters. Um, and uh, these are both jobs this idea of using your car, whether it's this particular company or not, some kind of delivery person where you are delivering people or things places, it's just quick and it's flexible. You log in when you need to and you log off when you need to. And um, for those of us that are looking for flexibility, those are ideal. 
I would say DoorDash is less contact with people. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for something that's no contact, DoorDash is awesome because you literally work whenever you want, as little or as much. You go pick something up that's already been paid for. So you're just picking it up. You're not even exchanging money. And then you leave it on someone's doorstep. So it's pretty much, I mean, it's not zero contact, but it's very low contact. Mm -hmm. So that's a good one. Okay, talk about number eight, Alex. Well, so education pods or school pods or school groups that are happening all around the country as kids are finding out that they're gonna be learning from home is a new industry. So some former teachers are becoming pod leaders to teach classrooms, but a lot of these pods, kids are gonna be following curriculum that their school district is offering and they simply need an adult to help guide them. So being an education pod leader could be uh, a source of income that could be really flexible because not all of these pods are meeting full-time. Some are because they're acting as full-time childcare for kids, for working parents, but some are just for parents that are working at home and need their kids either out of the house or occupied in their own homes for a few hours a day or a few days a week so that parents can get work done too. So that is a new thing that didn't exist. I mean, I know there are homeschool private teachers. That's essentially kind of what it is, but I think you can do it through a variety of ways, whether you're a licensed teacher, you get more money, or you're a mom like me and you um, are gonna be helping your own kids anyway, and you bring a few more families in, you can charge for that. And your kids would be happy if you did that. Yeah. <laughs> so win-win. Yes. Okay. Uh, number seven is an Instacart personal grocery shopper. That simply is, it's a, just like being a door dasher, you're an Instacarter and you shop grocery shop for other people. A lot of the elderly are using this right now and you deliver the groceries. So instead of doing click list, like at a grocery store, you actually get the groceries and deliver them to people. Yeah. So and lots of uh, private grocery chains are hiring their own private grocery shoppers, just like I do pick up um, at my grocery store now. I've started it during COVID. I will never go back um, unless I have to go into a store. <laughs> but now I'm trying to use it as much as possible. And those are employees of the grocery store. So um, just there's this whole new industry of personal grocery shoppers. So okay. Great. The good old fashioned dog walker. I mean, you can't. I mean, Come on. COVID pets, friendly. So COVID friendly. You're with their pets and you're outside. I mean, fabulous. Love that yes. one. Okay. Number five is be a meal maker for people. I mean, I, I tend to think this would be a hot commodity right now. You mm -hmm. just put it out on Facebook that you're willing to make some meals or you just say, Hey, I am making meals this week. Here's what I have and you let people bid on them below or buy them or for a certain price, maybe $10 per casserole or per bag of four or five grilled chicken breasts in a marinade. You know, yeah. things like that where you're basically cooking anyway for your family, but then you make extras and then you can sell them to people. Kind of like what Tara Royer Steele did, but on a much smaller scale, I would think. Yeah. I would guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, number four, this is also kind of hot in my neighborhood, childcare, just mm -hmm. being a nice little nanny um, or bringing kids into your home. Because again, if you're home with your kids anyway, and another family who is out working in the world needs childcare and with school closures, people are panicked. They are panicked. So it doesn't have to be forever. It's just while school is online, not in person, um, a lot of families could use childcare and um, there isn't necessarily an education component to it, like the pods. Yeah, totally. And then um, this one kind of goes along with being a pod leader, but you could be an online tutor. So there are several companies that actually hire people with, with college degrees. You really, you do have to have um, a college degree, but they hire people to be online tutors and they, often will do it with non-native English speakers. 
And so maybe um, like, for example, uh, I think it's called VIP Kid. They work with students in China. And so you would be a tutor, online tutor for students in China, which that'd be so cool. I mean, it'd be mm -hmm. so fun, you know, to meet people internationally and you're doing it safely from home and you're helping others. So that's a great one. Yeah, sometimes wacky hours I've heard with China specifically, yeah. but I mean, yeah, but that could be a benefit for moms mm -hmm. when their kids are sleeping. Yeah. You know, we work when people sleep. Um, okay, number two is uh, kind of the same idea of offering an online service, um, being a customer service rep. So there are all kinds of companies that hire people to do um, customer service uh, from home and they're considered like call center-ish employees, but you're answering questions, you're helping solve problems, you're paid to go through training and you need internet and a computer to be able to access the company's website backend stuff. And um, again, it can be one of those things that's really flexible. You tell them the hours you're available and um, there are a lot of opportunities out there right now for that. Well, and I think of even online websites like Fiverr, Upwork, 99designs, all of those, you know, people go on there and hire people for different things. And so you could actually be one of those people that's hired. Mm -hmm. So they just hire you for like one-time projects. And so though, basically you're a virtual assistant for someone in a specific area. So maybe it's graphic design or it's, I mean, they literally have, it's transcription. I mean, there's all sorts of things, which transcription is another one that people mm -hmm. can do. Okay, and I would say the last one, number one, is to be a Facebook marketplace reseller. So basically, you take all the things that you don't want anymore in your own home, and sell them on eBay or Facebook Marketplace. And you could also do that for others. You could offer that as, hey, I, maybe that, maybe someone else doesn't have the time to get on Facebook Marketplace or eBay and sell. And so you could say, I will sell your things for a percentage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people do it. There are people who their whole income is from eBay. So um, that is something that that um, existed before COVID, but I think could be with that narrowing margin for a woman, something that she thinks, huh, I never thought of that. I can do it while my kids are home <laughs> from school and, uh, and fun, right? You know, I have noticed that people are buying out stock of, for example, like in Target, Magnolia comes out with a new line every season. And so people will go in and buy a ton of things from that season that people will never see again. Well, let's say six months later, you bought a plate from that season and now three of your plates, or you bought a set of plates, three of them are chipped. Now you're looking for that plate, but you can't find it anymore because Target's moved on. Those people on eBay are upcharging for those plates and you're happy to buy them because you want them replaced. I mean, that's an example of how that system works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it works. Okay, so just a little entrepreneurial idea. So obviously, these are things that are meant for fast money. You may not, yeah, you may not spend the rest of your life doing this, maybe. But as you were talking about um, some of those virtual assistant jobs, I mean, we know people that have done some of these things before and it has sent them on a trajectory of like, wow, I'm really good at this and I can make money at this because they went on one of those websites, answered one job that gave them the confidence to do another and another. And now they've got kind of a booming clientele. So um, you just never know how creativity works, that you try one thing, you see an opportunity in the marketplace and you do an adjustment to make it different. And then you have this whole new thing that is just yours. So uh, we encourage you that as you are doing your own work flip, that you allow space for creativity, that you uh, trust God as he puts opportunities in front of you, Mm -hmm. that you try to take away those blinders that maybe make you think things have to go a certain way 
and again, that's creativity, but that you can see a new perspective. That's our hope is that you can see a new perspective as you look at work, as you look at income in the coming months. Mm -hmm. So good. Well, this has been a fun series. Thanks, Alex. Yes, thank you. Okay, on to the next one. We are coming up with a new series, Back to School, COVID Style, and we will be coming at you with some really helpful and fun episodes. So be looking forward to that next. Okay, bye. All right, bye.